All right, so Sean Strickland versus Paolo Costa just finished. And I will tell you, I was blown away. I was shocked because it was a split decision. It was a split decision victory for Sean Strickland in a boring fight. Those are the words of Sean Strickland, not the words of myself. It's a boring fight, man. Sorry, guys. And I got to tell you, I was shocked because it shouldn't have been a split decision. Sean Strickland clearly won that fight in his signature style, fighting behind the jab, walking him down, throwing little push kicks to the body, looking for right hands on occasion. But let's be honest, Sean was right. And it was very honest of him to say so and to label his own performance as boring. It kind of was a boring fight. The crowd was booing. They were getting a little restless. The commentators, the energy died down a little bit because... You know, if there's not sparks flying, it, it's hard sometimes to find things to talk about. Listen, that was high-level mixed martial arts. Sean Strickland's a tremendous fighter. I thought he clearly won the fight, to be honest. Paolo Costa had some moments, but it wasn't a slobber knock. It wasn't a classic. It wasn't a fight that's going to make everyone say, oh my God, Sean Strickland's going to fight for the belt. But I will tell you this, he won that fight fair and square. I don't know the name of the judge that gave it to Paolo Costa. I like Paolo Costa. Everyone likes Paolo Costa. He's a funny guy, the secret juice, all that kind of stuff. Sean Strickland even likes Paolo Costa. I like Costa. But there's no way he won that fight, okay? Paolo Costa made some grave errors, some very, very basic mistakes. Number one, he didn't hold his ground. You've got to hold your ground. For five rounds, he was on the back foot. And as the commentator said, as Joe Rogan pointed out numerous times, it's much harder to fight on your back foot. It requires more cardiovascular energy, you're more, more muscle twitch fibers. You're stressing out, you're moving back, you're dancing around, you haven't got your base, you can't throw as good shots, you're not on posture, you're not in position, you're not on balance, you can't swing, you're not in control. You're backing up, you're retreating. And to the eyes of the judges, the eyes of the layman, to the eyes of everybody watching all over the world, it looks like you're losing. What do you have to do in that situation? Plant your feet. It's that simple. If one guy's moving back, the other guy's going to follow. If that guy stops, that guy stops. Why? Because otherwise, you end up in a clinch environment. You end up walking onto a shot. And Paolo Costa has power. He has knocked out plenty of people. He nearly knocked out Robert Whittaker. Okay, the man is a big, strong beast of a human being. You've got to plant your feet. But that requires balls. That requires a certain level of manliness, we might say. And that's, you know, probably a frowned upon phrase to use these days, but that's what it kind of comes down to. Psychologically, Sean Strickland was the stronger man. He was the stronger person. He was stronger psychologically. I'm not talking physically now. I'm talking in the mind. He was able to walk him down the whole time, put Paolo Costa on the back foot, throw little team kicks to the body, chip away with the jab. In rounds one and round two, there was a couple of moments there where Costa hit the ground for a second, wasn't knocked down, but he kind of ate a jab and he went down. He jumped back up quickly. In round five, Strickland went on the attack in his signature style right at the end of the fight, like he did against Strickland, like he did against Israel Adesanya, and just like he did against Paolo Costa. Went on the attack, throwing flying kicks. Threw a head kick. Paolo blocked it, but the force knocked him down. So it was a good way to finish for Sean Strickland. For Paolo Costa, when he watches that fight back, he's going to be very annoyed. He's going to be very annoyed with himself because Paolo Costa's got a good look, right? He's very popular. He's got a good personality. He looks great. He's very marketable. And he's a devastating fighter, but he never showed up tonight. And a lot of that, we've got to give credit to Sean Strickland because I've sparred him many times. He is an awkward style. He's hard to land on. He's got good reflexes. He's, got, he's very quick. He takes a good shot. He moves his head well. He checks kicks. And he has a weird, funky style, you know? He doesn't load up on shots. And also, he's got an economical style. Whoever agreed, whoever was in the camp of Paolo Costa saying that, yeah, let's fight Sean Strickland over five rounds, that was a bad idea, right? If that was Paolo, hey, listen, fair enough, right? As a man, you feel like you can do that. You feel like you can win because as fighters, we have to be protected from ourselves. But if that was his manager that said, let's fight Strickland over five rounds, get rid of that manager, because he's an idiot. Sean Strickland can go five rounds standing on his head. Sean Strickland could have went 10 rounds at that pace tonight. We know that he spars a lot, and that's because you get used to it mentally. And when you're used to it mentally, you're not stressing out. You're not panicking. You're not breathing. You're not tensing, right? One thing that people don't do, they hold the breath. They hold the breath and they tense up and they're like, why the fuck did I get so tired? Because you were stressed out and you were holding your breath. Sean Strickland can do that standing on a head on his head, pardon me, like I said. 
So, Strickland gets the job done. Um, I thought Costa made it close, right? The, the rounds were kind of close. Sean never landed anything devastating or anything like that. It wasn't anyone's favorite performance or favorite fight, but it was a good win for Sean Strickland over a solid opponent. So after the fight, he jumps over the fence, he goes over, he gets a picture with Donald Trump. When Donald Trump walked in the building, by the way, everybody absolutely lost their minds. They always do. It's absolutely hilarious. They love, the UFC crowd loves some Donald Trump and fair play. Um, but listen, back to Sean Strickland. So it wasn't the most devastating performance, but it was a good win over a very, very good opponent. Now, Sean Strickland said, hey, listen, I want my title fight. I want to fight for the belt. I just did the UFC a solid. I was a company man. I took on number seven. And we know who he wants next. He wants Drickus Duplessis. The rumors are is that Drickus Duplessis is going to fight Israel Adesanya August in Perth. Okay? Perth, Australia. It hasn't been announced yet. And I don't know why that fight hasn't been announced. Maybe that fight isn't happening. Okay? I'm only going off what you know. I haven't spoken to anybody at the UFC. I'm going off social media, Twitter, Instagram, all the rest of it. Apparently, it's Izzy versus Drickus. But it hasn't been announced. Sean Strickland just got back to winning weights. So you never know. You never know if something happens to Israel Adesanya. If something happens to Drickus Duplessis, okay? They might do an interim. But if something happens to Izzy, Sean's going to get that shot. If Izzy doesn't show up, Sean will get it, right? He's still very, very popular. Uh, his stock didn't go down. He just got back to winning ways. He labeled it a boring fight himself. And yeah, okay, it was kind of a boring fight. And the crowd didn't like it too much, but it doesn't matter. But the main thing is, he got the job done. He won the fight. It's not easy to step into the UFC's octagon in front of all those people, in front of Donald Trump, in front of everybody watching all over the world and fight an absolute beast of a human being like Paolo Costa. And he is a beast of a human being. And there was a reason why he was backing up and that's because of the pressure of Sean Strickland, right? So we got to give him credit for that. But, right, he didn't exactly stake his claim at a title shot. In Saudi Arabia in a few weeks, Hamzat Chimiev is going up against Robert Whittaker. We know how Hamzat fights. If Hamzat goes out there and tries to ragdoll Robert Whittaker all over the place, pick him up, slam him down, talk to Dana White, have a conversation with Turkey El Sheikh whilst he's doing it, whilst he's choking him out, right? That gets you a title shot. Picking people up and slamming him like he did to Li Jing Liang, right? That gets you a title shot, right? Not jabbing to a decision. And again, I'm not hating. That was a great win by Sean Strickland. So now Sean, back to winning ways. He's won four out of his last five. Just got a split over Paolo Costa. Lost the split to Drickus Duplessis. Unanimous over Israel Adesanya. Beats Abel Magomedov by TKO and a decision over Nazardin Imavov. The pattern there is the decisions, okay? Uh, all against very, very good competition. But when you've got somebody like Hamzat coming up the ranks who stops people, who's super aggressive from the get-go, that might trump him to the title fight because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for that title fight. Does that win get him the title fight? Let me know in the comment section. But first and foremost, congratulations to Sean Strickland. That was a big win over a tough opponent. Right, i got to get back out there. The main event is starting. Subscribe, ring the bell. Let me know what you think down there.